Hey guys, this is Matt with FrogHydroponics.com and today we're going to be talking about the difference between digital and magnetic ballast and uh, how to choose the best one for you. So first, one of the obvious differences between the two is the size and weight. So first we'll talk about the magnetics. They're quite a bit larger and heavier. Um, the reason behind that is they use a solid steel core wrapped in metal wire, so a lot of that weight is built into their cores. Um, they also have quite a bit more of a housing, uh, a lot more metal going around it. Um, this is the newer kind of version of what they would consider the traditional magnetic ballasts. They've kind of streamlined the components, obviously, and uh, cut down on the amount of metal they wrapped it in um, to help uh, make it a little cheaper. Um, also, uh, it runs a little cooler, um, but I would say one of the cons of that would be it's more susceptible to spills um, and uh, foliar sprays and things like that with these vents on them. Um, so keep that in mind uh, when you're choosing between these two different magnetic styles. Um, some of the pros of magnetic ballasts I can think of um, would be that they're uh, reliable, they're cheap to start up, you can get a lot of them for a, a a good price so great for starter gardens um, they also use what's called a choke on them they have a switch that allows you to choose between metal halide and HPS bulbs which helps fire the bulbs more regularly and more evenly um, it's less bulb failure uh, less bulb degradation and uh, we seem to have le better luck with magnetics on what we consider finicky bulbs or finicky uh, in light setups um, so uh, you know if you do have want to run some bulb that's been giving you issues magnetics might be the cho choice for you um, and then they obviously both run 120 and 240 power which is always nice um, some of the other benefits uh, they can be serviced relatively easy by the manufacturer um, the parts are not really expensive to get in there and actually get them worked on so they can last a really long time um, and yeah, all around a, a really good traditional lighting system. Um, some of the cons, um, they're more subject to the power at the facility you're running them at, wherever you're running these ballasts, if there's extra power or there's a lot of power laying around, they'll run a little bit stronger than they're supposed to, causing the bulb to burn a little bit brighter and your air conditioning or your cooling system to work a little harder than expected. Um, and if the place you're at is using a ton of power at the time or you have a ton of lights on there, they have a tendency to run a little bit lower than optimal, which can underlight the bulb and once again give you a kind of a less than optimal spectrum. Um, so uh, something to think about when choosing them is also just you know efficiency. Um, they're a little bit less efficient um, than the digital ballast. They're about three to five percent, you know, safely somewhere between three to five percent less efficient. Um, obviously, there's a lot of uh, stuff that goes into that. What ball? What ballast? What system? But safely three to five percent less efficient than a digital, which means the money that you're spending to run that light, uh, less of it's getting to the bulb, which is you know obviously costing you a little bit more money for less light um, so not optimal um, they do not produce the rfi frequency that would be one of the big pros that i've left out there um, they don't produce the radio frequency interruption that the digitals do um, so it's you know not going to cause any issues with the neighbors or the you know local businesses and mess with their internet or any of that kind of stuff that i'm sure you've heard about um, but they do run quite a bit hotter um, so you do need to compensate for that if you're going to put them into your garden or put them into your space you got to uh, assume they're going to add more heat than a digital would so make sure you can compensate that with your cooling system um, and then obviously when you're mounting them, keep that in mind that they are hotter. Don't put them on something flammable or you know, something flammable because they do run quite a bit hotter. Um, other than that, they're a great lighting system, great for startups uh, and cheap and reliable ballast. Um, now we'll look at the digitals next. Um, the digitals are obviously quite a bit smaller. Um, they use electrical circuitry to control the output voltage um, versus a solid steel core um, and that allows them to make them quite a bit more sleek and small. They obviously have these air-cooled fans in them. Not all of them do, but a lot of them these days have uh, small little computer fans built into them that help cool the system down, um, keep it really cool running so it doesn't add almost any heat to your garden. Um, they also come with these knobs. A lot of them have the, uh, selectable wattages or dimmable wattages. Now there is a difference, uh, just like there's a difference between these two, there's a difference between dimmable and selectable wattages. Um, selectable watt can actually run at 600 watt, 750 watt, 400 watt, and you can actually screw that bulb in the proper wattage, run it at the proper wattage on your ballast, and you'll, you're effectively buying you know, two or three real solid ballast for one price. Uh, the dimmable ballasts are a little bit different. They'd be more for if it was like a hot day and you wanted just to turn them down for a day or two. Um, but running you know, your 1,000 watt at 50% is not ideal. It's gonna give you an underpowered bulb and less quality spectrum of lighting. And running a 600 watt bulb at 50% on 1,000 is still not ideal. So you know, if your intention is to use it as multiple ballasts, buy the selectable wattage ballast. If your intention is to use it as a 1,000 watt ballast with the option to cool it down on a hot day, then maybe uh, go ahead and go with a dim dimmable ballast. 
Um, they also have uh, the new models are gonna have the uh, radio frequency shielding on them. So they do produce radio frequency interruption. If you get a lot of them in one spot, the neighbors could get upset or the companies around you could start having issues with their uh, cable or their sort of shorthand radio operators around you, they'll have issues too. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. If you're doing a bunch of them, it might be nice to go magnetic or make sure the ones that you're buying are the newer models that have the radio frequency shielding. Um, you can see a little bit of it here. The Quantums have it done internally. Um, and it'll say on the box, you know, low RFI and it'll talk about RFI shielding. Um, so other than that, um, some of the cons of the digital ballast. Oh, one more thing. Obviously much more efficient or three to five percent at very least efficient, which across a large garden could absolutely make a big difference in overall productivity. So keep that in mind. More of the money you're spending to run these is getting to the bulb um, and running that bulb more effectively. It does, and they're also not um, dependent on the voltage or sorry the power of, of the facility that you're at. Um, no matter what's running on the place that you're at, a lot of power or no power, they're going to give the bulb the proper amount all the time. So there's no variation there, which is really nice. Um, but some of the cons I can think of, um, they're more expensive, you know, definitely you know, anywhere from one and a half to two times more expensive than a magnetic setup. Um, they uh, have some good warranties, but they're usually going to be a swap out warranty. They don't fix them usually. So if it's out of warranty, there's no real option to go get it fixed. It's pretty much you have to buy a new one. If it's in warranty, you're usually, depending on where you go through, through us, it's usually just a swap out for a new one if it's inside that warranty. Um, they do have the air cooled fans, which is a pro but it also can be a con depending on your garden if you have these running in a corner of a dusty humid room that's going to pull in dusty humid air and it can actually shorten the life of your electronics and cause for more failures and you know ball failures and things like that and on that note they're more finicky with uh, bulbs um, they have more compatibility issues with this one not wanting to work with that bulb or this one not wanting to work with this bulb um, you don't have that much with the magnetics they seem to work on pretty much everything um, so one of those are one of the, one other con there um, but uh, other than that, I would say, you know, they both have their niche. They both have their reason to purchase. It just decides which one is better for you. And that's the choice you'll have to make at the beginning of the gardening process. Um, and uh, magnetics, I always say, are a great starter and they work great as a backup in the future to have around so that if you get into digitals, that if this one does go out and something's wrong, you have that magnetic laying around to help you out. So um, there's a lot more information about Digitals and Magnetics on our website. Come check us out, uh, do a little reading. Um, we also have a ton more versions of these, you know, a lot more brands um, and uh, a lot more information on those brands and why they're different and uh, what's better for you could be something that I don't have here today. So come check us out and see what you think. And I uh, hope this video helped you guys out and uh, we'll see you next time.